All right, hey guys. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply what we've learned with synthetic division and with large order polynomials and say, hey, why do we even uh, wanna factor it? Why do we wanna find the zeros? Why do, we want, why do we wanna find the roots? Now, I'm gonna give you guys an easy one right now. We're gonna say two x cubed minus five x squared minus 22 x minus 15, okay? That's my function, my f of x. Now, for us to break this up, we would probably have to use synthetic division. And we can do this. I'm going to give you guys the roots that are going to work. Let's go ahead and break this up and factor it by 5. So my factor is x minus 5. So 2, negative 5, negative 22, negative 15. Remember, this, we copy the values down, just the coefficients, and we use these as placeholders. x to the third, x squared, x and constant. <laughs> Dog going to a dollar. Dang. All right. So <laughs> 2 becomes 10, uh, 10 minus 5 is 5, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 minus 22 is 3, and 3 times 5 is 15. So hopefully you guys are good with your multiplication tables. We now have 2x cubed plus 5x squared. Oh, no, sorry, 2x cubed. What am I talking about? I'm thinking about dog coin. To the moon. Uh, plus 5x plus 3. And now we have to factor it uh, by hand. I'm going to give myself a couple possibilities. That's 2 and 1 and 1 and 3. And we know 2 times, so we're trying to add it, we're trying to add to become 5. So if you pick the wrong pair, you got the wrong problem. So if I pick 2 and 3 become 6, and 1 and 1 become 1, but 1 plus, right, that's a plus, 1 plus 6 is 7. Fail. That wasn't it. Try another combination. If I say 2 times 1 and 1 times 3, that's 2 plus 3. Oh, that's 5. That worked. We found a way to factor this. This is 2x and x. That's for sure. 2 times, we said 2 times 1. And if I were to use a 1 here, we have to use 1 and 3. The other number has to be 3 and a plus, 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 plus. So we worked previously on factoring these large order polynomials. So the polynomials are going to be x minus 5, 2x, oops, 2x plus 3, and x plus 1. We can now say what the roots are. Roots, which is another way of saying zeros, are x is equal to 5. Okay, see this is 5. This is negative 3 over 2. And this is negative 1. These are the zeros. Oh, darn it, why did I write negative 5? Negative 1 and negative 3 over 2. I'm going to rewrite these in order. x can be negative 3 over 2 negative 1, and 5, just from smallest to largest. Great, good job. Pat yourself on the back. Now, this is a super useful skill if I'm trying to factor stuff, or if I'm trying to solve for zeros, but how is this practically useful? And what we're going to talk about now is using this to graph. We're going to graph... Darn it, can't spell graph. We're going to graph our large order polynomials today. And you're going to say, you might think graphing has been hard before. It's so much work. But if you know the essence of graphing, the idea is to represent an equation in this drawing. And we're, we can glean a couple of things to make that drawing a little more accurate, but we don't have to be the most accurate in the world. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the graph of our problem. What was my original problem? It's 2, negative 5, 22. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 22 minus 15. I think it was minus 15. Yes, minus 15. So we're going to graph this guy. Now I'm going to show you how to graph this without a calculator, without a graphing calculator at all. We said that the roots are negative 3 over 2, negative 1, and 5. And those are all our previous skills. Now that's actually graph it. If I give you guys a graph here. Graph the zeros. We have a zero at negative 3 over 2. Put a dot. At negative 1, put a dot. And all the way at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, at 5, put a dot. So here's one thing I want you guys to know, is that the roots, the zeros of my polynomial are actually the zeros of the graph. They are the zeros of the graph here. Now, 
the next thing is you could just start you know running your way through it you can just start running your way through it oops that was terrible just make up a path through these points it's like a video game in the video game you have checkpoints or chapters or save points in a video game and you must hit these points to move on right if you don't hit these points you haven't gone there yet you could go whoa, 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 and then but you have to go through that checkpoint and that's a point i want to make clear for you guys is that roots are checkpoints for the graph now we need some hints we need some hints are we going to start from the negative or are we going to start from the positive oops missed that one we're going to start from the positive where are we going to start and is it really going to cost me that much more work and it's not so here is today's lesson the lesson is now that we've graphed the roots we need some hints and the hint is this part my leading coefficient my leading term if you look at this leading term i want to ask you for x cubed versus x squared 22 sorry that was a 22 x or even the constant of five who is the biggest bully when x becomes big enough you've seen brothers and sisters where the sister is taller than the boy the sister might be older the sister since she's older she's taller she's stronger she's faster than than the boy generally but after puberty after giving enough time that younger brother is like the tallest freaking kid in the family now right and that's my idea here who's the biggest bully sometimes this bully won't be the strongest especially when x is small if x is zero isn't 15 way bigger than zero what if x was one hey one is way smaller than 15 one times one times one is one times two 15 is still going to kill it but what if i get to the number five remember see how my last number is five here isn't 5 cubed 125 times 2 is 250? Is 15 have anything on that? Okay. And my point is, there's going to be a point, a number, where after that point, guess what? That's your biggest bully. And that's what we're paying attention to. We're going to look at the biggest bully, and the biggest bully in town is going to help graph this graph. So, if I told you, at 5, if I plug in 5, 5, 5, the answer is going to be 0. That's our tipping point. You think of a scale, okay? We have a scale, and a scale is on a balancing point. So we got weights going on it, and if the weight is heavier on one side, we're going to tip down. If it's heavier on this side, it's going to tip this way. And what happens is we're at zeros here, and are we on the plus side or the minus side? And that's what we're looking at here. If we're on the plus side, we go up. And if we're on the minus side, we go down. And there's only one choice we can make. Now, here is the hint. How do I know that which way this graph is going to go? Looking here at 2x cubed. 2x cubed, which is my biggest bully. If this was a large positive number, like 10, like 100, like 1,000, what is a positive times a positive times a positive give you this number will still stay positive right I can guarantee you this graph will always rise up after five there's no return there's no coming home you've left the nest don't come back I can guarantee you with a hundred percent certainty that after five we are going to be positive and we will never come back we'll never come back and, and dip back down Let's look at why I can guarantee that. First, we said that after five, after my zero, okay, we have the biggest bully here. Now, I want to prove that to you. Can I prove that to you? X minus five, two X plus three, and X plus one. I want to prove that to you, please. If I pick the number five, isn't five minus five zero? Okay. Now, if I pick a number bigger than five, like six, six, six six take a look here oh don't 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 say it's a devil symbol okay but isn't this a positive two times six plus three is still positive six plus one is still positive aren't all these numbers positive 
That means your final answer will stay positive, must be positive. What if I pick 7 instead? 7, 7, 7. Does that change the fact these are still positive? 8, 8, 8. 10, 10, 10. Does it change the fact that these are still positive? No. No matter what number you pick, from now on, we're positive. And I'll show you kind of one reason why. Looking at this simple example, isn't negative 5 my only negative? What if this was 4? 4, 4, 4. Okay? 4 plus 1, that's the last one first. 4 plus 1 is still positive. 2 times 4 plus 3. Hey, that's positive if it's a positive number. But if, it, but if this first term was a little bit less, this would have been negative. A negative times a positive times positive is negative. And that's actually what happens here. It's going to be negative. But we'll get that to a little bit. To a little bit. But my point is to show you that depending on what number we pick, will determine if we're positive or negative in the overall problem. And you don't have to actually plug it into this huge problem. Just look at the hint. The hint is this. Look at the front coefficient because after our last zero, that's our last bus for the night. There's no coming back. You guys ever try to make it for the last bus of the night? And you're like, oh, I gotta make it. If not, I don't make it. How the hell am I gonna get home? And that's the last bus for the night. Now, a question oftentimes is, Mr. Ko, why doesn't this term come back down? How can you guarantee me that this won't come down and bite me in the butt later? Like, it's almost like uh, having a secret that no one knows about that will haunt me later in life. How do I know this isn't gonna come back and bite me in the butt? I can tell you this because of this simple rule. If you look at the original problem, didn't we say we only have three zeros? Only three zeros. Only one, two, three zeros. Are there any other zeros possible? No. So there are no more hidden roots here. This is impossible to happen because I can guarantee you we only had three roots. I only had three children. There's not another fourth ch child that's going to pop out of nowhere. Okay? This will never happen. And because I can guarantee you we only have three roots, this graph can never, ever come back down. It can never be negative again because there are no more roots available. I'm going to go ahead and draw this graph. I'm going to give you guys another story, a little scary story. Um, but this way, I unfortunately envision it. Now, let's look at the negative side. This is negative infinity over here. So as numbers get more to the left, they become more negative. Okay? So let's look at my last zero. In, case, in this case, is my first zero. If I pick a number that's negative, let's plug in 2x cubed, my biggest bully, and please make it negative. Now, what is a negative times negative times negative? And that's a 2 here, right? That's going to be positive. Negative, negative, negative stays negative, isn't it? So this is my guarantee for you. If the number is anywhere to the left of my last zero, my, my last bus, this has to go down. Guarantee you 100%. So we know which way this graph has to at least end. It ends on the right as x gets closer to positive infinity, y goes up to positive infinity. Please take a look at this notation here. As x gets closer to positive infinity, that means as x gets closer to positive infinity, the y value shoots up to positive infinity. As x gets closer to negative infinity on the left, see where we're approaching negative infinity on the left, y goes which way, up or down? y goes down to negative infinity. Is this always the case? No, it isn't. That's why we always have to check it. Always check. On the right, what's a positive, positive, positive? Positive times positive times positive? Tells me that's positive. On the left, negative, 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 that stays negative. So we can guarantee you that we're negative. Now the next rule here is that whenever I have a root, I must touch or cross through zero. So we have a root at negative three over two. We're gonna cross through in this case. But I need to warn you, take a look. You guys, you guys know what checkpoints are, right? You if you guys ever play Mario Kart, you have to go through certain gates. If you don't go through these certain gates, ain't working you ain't gonna finish the race these gates help you say you must hit this point before you go along now I want to show you guys me making a mistake if I go through my first gate 
and I keep driving. Didn't we just miss a total route? You must hit all those steps. You guys ever go to Vegas and you stop on Barso and you bar stop at Barso every single time to go to the Carl's Jr. and use the bathroom? We have to stop. We have to stop. If you guys take a look here, I went from negative three over two and I hit negative one. Between negative one, I'm gonna go through that gate. I'm gonna keep driving. Oh, where are we gonna go? Let's go. Let's go. You got lost along the way. Let's go. Where are you going? Where are you going? From negative one, after you cross it, guess where my next stop is? My next stop is negative five. Oh, it's a positive five. We have to hit that stop along the way. Now, I want to throw in one more extra stop here along the way. What's the easiest number ever to plug into a function? The easiest number ever to plug into a function. What number can I plug in here to be the easiest number ever? Some of you guys might be saying one. Nope, easier than that. Easiest number to plug in to a function is zero. Because if I plug in zero, what happens? Zero, whoops, zero, zero, zero. The only number left is negative 15. I want you guys to realize that if I plug x is zero, so the y-intercept is when x equals to zero. And if I plug in zero here, f of zero, what happens to all my numbers? The only number left is at negative 15. And take a look here. I'm going to actually graph that negative 15. If you want, negative 15 could be here. Remember, this is your graph. We're just hitting some points. So we'll go through negative 15. We'll make this negative 15 over here. Make it easy on us. And after hit negative 15, we're going to walk our way, make a nice curve here to 5. And that is our graph. I talked way more than I graphed here. I talked way more than I graphed. So let me do the same problem quickly for you and show you how fast this graphing is. We said our roots was for 2x cubed, that's our largest term, is negative 3 over 2, negative 1, and 5. Okay, you don't need to copy this. I'm just showing you how fast we could do this. Negative 3 over 2, negative 1, and 5. We have roots, so go ahead and put dots on there. What does the graph look like on the right side here? That's a positive. Positive, positive, positive stays positive. On the left side, negative, negative, negative stays negative. We had to make sure we hit all our roots along the way. These are all our breadcrumbs. Okay, cross, cross, cross. We've crossed through our roots. Take a look here. I did cross the roots. And oh yeah, my y-intercept, if I plug it zero to the problem, we said that was negative 15. Take a look here. Look at my wonderfully excellent graph. I'm going to go ahead and graph this for you now um, because I'm being a little sinister to myself. Let's go ahead and graph this and see if it gives us a graph that we we're talking about. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 22x, 22x minus 15. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I want you guys to look at this graph. The scale looks a little bit crazy. I want to change the scale of this graph so we can uh, see this a little better. Uh, let's say it's going to go 20 up and negative uh, 80 down. We're going to space this out to become uh, negative 5 to 5. Okay, if you look at this graph, it is a little tweaked when it comes to scale, but doesn't this graph kind of look like the graph that we drew? Right? Now, the point of this is that we are coming up with a rough graph. I don't know how tall or how low this graph goes, but I also don't care. If this was multiple choice, you could pick which graph which matched up to which graph. And the important part is, take a look here. Oops. Oh, I miswrote this slightly. I think, did I write? Oh, oh, da! Ah. It's because, oh, come on, stop. There. 
it was 15. Okay, that looks better. If you look at my points, we have, see that graph looks a lot more closer, that we have 5 is my 0, 1 is negative 1, and negative 1.5 is my 0. I have no clue that this goes all the way down to negative 72, nor do I care. That's actually a skill that we will learn in calculus, how to figure out the max and minimum values for this graph. We'll learn that in calculus, not in pre-calculus. How do I know that this was going to be 0.7? I don't. You're not supposed to. You're just supposed to know that the graph does go up between negative 1 and negative 1.5 and negative 1. And this graph also, um, this graph also is, wait, what's going on? yeah, this graph also um, goes down between negative 1 and 5. Okay. All right. So hopefully I'm trying to make you guys believers. Okay, here's another thing. Let me give you guys another problem here. Okay, let's do one more problem here. The problem is x cubed. Actually, no, let's throw a negative in there. Just because, since we're doing that right now. This is going to be negative x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. Is f x, and that's my function. Now I'm going to ask you graph the polynomial. You graph the polynomial. So we're going to do what we did before. Somehow factor this problem. Somehow factor this problem. Now to make ourselves lives easier, I want to write negative x cubed minus two x squared plus five x. No, darn it. Sorry, there's a flip the signs. Plus two x squared minus 5x uh, minus 6. If I told you we could factor this by, um, let's say 2, here we go, by 2, 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. So careful, these are, I'm taking out stuff already. 1, 2, 4, 8, 3, 6, 0, all right, x squared plus 4x plus 3. We can factor these out. To become x, x, 1 plus 3 is 4. So we have our factors, careful, we have our factors, negative x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 3. And our zeros, or our roots, right, these are also called roots, we're going back and forth between these words, x is 2, negative 1, and negative 3. Right? This is stuff that we've been working on previously. Now today's skill is how do I take what we did before and now graph it? Okay, how do we take what we did before and now graph it? Here we go. Draw a simple graph. We graph the roots. These are zeros. So at 1, 2, put a dot. At negative 1, put a dot. Negative 2, negative 3, put a dot. Take a look here. We at least have the three anchor points for our graph. We have our three anchor points for our graph. Now we have to decide, are we going to go up or down at the end? And this is where I always like starting. I always, starting at like, I always like starting on the right side. And the, what we do is we come back here and we look at our biggest bully, our bi largest term, our first term, negative x cubed. So I'm going to write that for you guys, negative x cubed, right? Because we are done with this. We're done with it. That's all done. We graphed it. Now we're going to crawl our way across this graph. So at negative 3, if I stick in a positive, right, positive times positive times positive, isn't this positive? What's a positive times a negative? Negative. So it turns out this graph goes down. Okay, let me show you guys this again. If it's a, if I plug in, let's say, even if I plug in, I'm going to plug in a number like 10. Okay, 10 times 10 times 10. You can plug in 20, 20 times 20 times 20. You can plug in 11, 11, it doesn't matter, as long as it's a positive number. You'll see that, isn't this negative 1,000 in the end? So as we leave our last checkpoint, we eventually have to reach negative 1 freaking thousand, which is down. Mr. Ko, why can't, can you guarantee this isn't going to pop back up? Why isn't, how are you so sure that this is not going to pop back up? And here is my sad story. I watch 
way too much sad stories on YouTube. And when I was a kid, I used to watch movies where kids would be playing on the ice. Like they would be playing, they would be, I don't know, Canada or something like that. And they would be playing on the ice. So you have a kid. He's playing on the ice. He has skates on, right? And he's he's playing on the ice. Let me go ahead and draw the this ice ring here. Not ice ring, but he's playing on the lake. Right? And he's playing on the ice. And what happens to the ice in all these movies? The ice breaks. Right? It breaks and you end up with a big hole. What happens to the kid? He goes whoosh. Right? The water splashes. And he ends up underwater. Okay? Underwater kid. Now, can this kid come up anywhere in the frozen lake? Can you break through the ice? No, because there are no holes. There are no roots. There are no ways for him to come back up. If he wants to come back up, he has to swim back to the hole. But how do you do that? It's freezing cold water. You can't see in the water that well. How are you supposed to find where that hole is? You don't. You're done. So what happens is, that's my story here. If there are no roots, there's no way for this graph to come back up because there are no openings. The only openings happen at the zeros, and those zeros we said was negative 3, negative 1, and 2. That's why I can guarantee you that this graph will never come back up. There is no second rally for GameStop. It is done. Okay, let's look on the left side. Sorry, this is a weird story. But it's true. There is no, if there is no break, bricks for him to get out of the ice, he ain't coming back up. On my left side, negative x cubed. What if I stick a negative, negative, negative? Remember, there's a negative originally here, right? That's my negative. So negative, 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 negative. That's going to be a positive. I can guarantee this graph will be up on the left side. So how do we phrase this? As x goes to positive infinity, right? Isn't positive infinity means bigger numbers? Bigger numbers? Where does y go? y heads toward negative infinity. It is dropping. It's going to hell. Okay? On my left side, as x goes to negative infinity, and what am I talking about? I'm talking about x, 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 and x is crawling to negative infinity. Which way is the graph going? y is headed toward, is it heading toward negative infinity or positive infinity? It is heading up to positive infinity. Now, the next rule is this, and I'm going to add a rule to what we were talking about before, is that if I have a root, and the term is going to be multiplicity, so let me write this rule real quick. So multiplicity. Multiplicity is a fancy word for the number of times, okay, the number of times something happens. And we talked about this before, multiplicity, so the number of times something happens. How many times do you see the answer 2, negative 1, and negative 3? So for x is equal to, x is equal to, x is equal to, how many times do you see the answer 2 up here? We only see it once. So it has a multiplicity of 1, and we abbreviate that M-U-L-T. Negative 1, I only see that once. And negative 3, I only see this once. So these are all odd. Do you guys agree the number 1 is odd? So here is a rule for us. If the multiplicity is odd, okay, is odd, you cross the graph at the root. Okay, whoops. I'll just squeeze that here. At the root. So here's what it looks like. If x is equal to 2, we cross. We cross out of that water. It's almost like a dolphin, right? A dolphin jumps out of the water, right? You will jump out of the water at that root. If that multiplicity is odd, if I see it only happen one time, we are going to cross. Okay, and I can draw a little dolphin here.
Okay. Oh man, that's terrible dolphin. Let's give his dorsal fin a little earlier. Okay, that's my dolphin. It jumps out of the water. Right? It's majestic. Okay. But if my multiplicity is even, that means it happens an even number of times, you bounce at the root. What do you mean by bounce? Um, you ever watch those uh, contestant shows where there like, are three doors and the person has to run through that door and he's not sure which of those three doors are actually open? And on doors that are open, he just runs right on through and he breaks it like paper. But on the doors that are not open, you go, he bounces off the door and he hits the floor. And that's what happens. If we have, here's my example, x minus 2 and x minus 2, okay? Let's say these are my factors. So my root is positive 2, okay? With a multiplicity of 2. That means it happened, x is 2 and 2 happens twice, okay? Happens twice. And this happened before. We talked about it before. What happens? The graph, it thought it was going to break through. Nope. It will hit the root and it'll bounce back out. It is a bounce. Some people will call this a touch. It's like touching. You guys do suicides? Not, okay, okay, no. Suicides from a PE, like suicide laps. And then you, you touch the, the marker and then you run back. It's like that. It's a bounce. Okay. So this is the big rule that we have to take with us. If I see the root happen once, we always have to cross through it like a dolphin, a majestic dolphin jumping through the water. But if it is a multiplicity of even, right? That means two, four, six, eight, you will bounce. You don't go anywhere. You come back down. And we'll show you guys a problem with that in just a little bit. So for this, let's go ahead and come back here. We are going to look at negative three. How many times does negative three happen? Only once, the multiplicity of one. That means we cross over. Yes. The next value, oh, let's go, I got lost. Nope, nope, nope. The next value you must hit is negative 1. So don't go too far down because we're going to cross that negative 1. Now, on negative 1, I only see it once. That's a cross. Look at that majestic dolphin going up into the air. What's the next value it has to hit? It must hit 2. So I must hit 2, and I'm back on track. Now, here's my last check for you. I want you to look at the original problem here and tell me what is my y-intercept. What is my y step? If I could make everything 0, 0, 0, what's the only number left? That's a positive 6, isn't it? That's my y step. And take a look here. This graph goes through positive 6. Oh my gosh, Mr. Ko, your graph is so accurate. How did you make it so accurate? That's amazing, Mr. Ko. Now, just to prove this to you again, um, let's go ahead and graph this out quickly. I'll do it quickly. We have negative x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. And take a look at their graph and my graph. Oh my goodness, the roots are at negative 3. Our y-intercept is at 6. Oh my goodness. Look at these graphs. They're like twins. Okay, they're not like twins, but, but they look pretty darn good for the amount of work that I put in. Did I know that this tops out at 8.2? No. I don't know, right? Do I know that this bottoms out at negative 4.061? Nope. Nor do I care. With more work, I can give you more detail. But with the amount of work I did, that's all the detail we need. Okay, so hopefully you guys are kind of getting the idea here. Let's go ahead and look at your homework today. And your homework is going to be on my open math. Uh oh. Sorry, I lost. Um, it disconnected from me. Okay, today on your IXL, uh, sorry, not IXL, my open math, you guys are going to be working on these problems. Now, my goal is to show you guys that a lot of these problems are actually can be done really quickly without any work because it's already set it up for you. It's already set up for you. Okay. So I'm going to actually have a little bit of a notebook on the side here, just a little bit.
just a little bit so I can just make some notes, jot some numbers if I need to, okay? So, okay, looking at the right, given the function, so they factored out for us, right? They already factored it out for us. X, X minus 8, and X plus 3. What is the y-intercept? Now, this is one of the easiest questions because remember, we said what's the y-intercept is by plugging in 0. If I say 0, 0 minus 8, 0 plus 3, don't even do any of this work. If you see x, x minus 8, and x plus 3, please know if I plug in 0, what's 0 times any other number? That's straight 0. That's a freebie. Oh, that's going to be wrong. It's going to tell me it's wrong. Uh-oh. It's going to be 0. Okay, 0. First one's free. Oh, darn it. Okay, what are my x-intercepts? The x-intercepts are 0, 8, and negative 3. Take a look here. How did I do that so quickly? 0, 8, and negative 3. Because if I make... Darn it. Okay, do x, x minus 8, and x minus, plus 3. Make this go to 0. Make this go to 0. Make that go to 0. That means that's going to be a 0 and 8 and negative 3. Now be careful because they told us right here that they want it in order from smallest to largest. So smallest is negative 3. I'm saying right negative negative 3. The second oh my gosh I think I'm writing Chinese. Oh it has not can't even read negative 3. Negative 3. Okay I'm trying negative e. Negative 3. My second answer is going to be the next biggest which is 0. And my last answer here is going to be 8. All right. Now, this next question is, be careful, you have to learn how to read this. It says when x, when x is going to infinity, that's a positive infinity, which way is the graph going to go? Is the y going to be up or down? That's what this means right here. Is the y going to be positive or negative? Please input a plus or minus. And I was trying to emphasize that before. So, Looking at our graphs, okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph this. If I say my roots are negative 3, 0, and 8, these are my roots. And the problem is x, x minus 8, and x plus 3. This is all you need to do. Take the front x's and multiply them each other. x times x times x is x cubed. That is my front coefficient. That's my strongest bully. So what's a positive, positive, positive? This for sure, this graph will go up forever. If you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. Instead, we could just do this. Watch. Pick a number that's bigger than 9. No, pick a number that's bigger than 8. Is that, isn't 9 bigger than 8? I want you guys to plug in 9, 9, and 9. Please don't do the math. But isn't 9 just positive? What's 9 minus 8? Is that positive or negative? Just tell me if it's positive or negative. Just tell me if it's positive or negative. It is positive. Isn't 9 plus 3 also positive? What's a positive times a positive times a positive? This stays positive. We will be forever positive. And what we do is we write a plus sign here. That's all they want. How about on the left side? As x gets closer to negative infinity, negative infinity here, see how that's negative infinity? That means we're going to the left. Let's take a look at the graph. If I go to the left now, what's a negative, negative, negative? Now, negative times negative times negative stays negative, so we know we're going to go down here. If you are unsure about that, I want you guys to look here. Pick a number that's less than negative 3. Negative 4. Now that's going to give us a negative. Negative 4, negative 8 still is still negative. Negative 4, positive 3 is still negative. You can plug it in and you'll see that that's also still negative. So we know it's going to be negative here. Okay. Go submit. Oh, because, look, it's because they misinterpret that negative as a probably the Chinese number 1 or something. Something lame. Okay, that, that's better. Okay. So you're going to do that for the next problem. Same exact steps. 
Okay, the y intercept, plug in zero. If I plug in zero here and I plug in zero here, that's squared, careful. That's negative one squared is positive. That's gonna be negative six. Take a look at the answer, negative six. What are the x-intercepts? We know it's gonna be one. Right? Are you guys okay? This is one and this is six. Making this go to zero, that's gonna be one and that's gonna be six. Okay, one and six, so we're at one and six. Done, done. Which way is this going to fly? Is it gonna go up or down at the end of the day? If showing you guys these zeros is we have a zero at at one and a six. So I'm gonna help you graph this one. We know that x times x times x is x cubed. So positive, positive, positive stays positive forever. Negative, negative, negative stays negative forever. If you're not sure, take a look here. I want to show you guys that you guys can do this actually algebraically. Pick a number bigger than 6, my last root. That's pick 7, right? Isn't 7 minus 1 positive and isn't 7 minus 6 positive? Good. How about on the left side? 0, if I plug in 0 and plug in 0, is 0 minus 1? That's negative. Square it, that's still positive. How about what's 0 minus 6? That's negative. Now positive times a negative stays negative. Go to hell. So they want us to write a positive and negative. On the right side, it's positive, and the left side is negative. The next problem is not factor free, number three, but you can factor it yourself. Okay. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this next problem here. Number four, I did not factor for you. And for some of these questions, like one, two, three, four, five, Oh shoot, I need to excuse some of these questions. I'm going to excuse some of these questions. There's a lot of these. I'm going to get rid of these, some of these questions so they're not as much and you, you'll, you'll be excused out of them. But let's do this first one here. Let's demonstrate. So you're going to actually answer the questions to uh, write out the characteristics of this. So if you see x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. So the first question is, what's the end behavior? So let's go ahead and graph this to a certain extent. Let's find our zeros first. Okay. Well, you don't need to find the zeros for this. You, if you look at the front coefficient, look here. Okay, everyone look here. On the right side, wherever the last root is, wherever the roots are, okay, wherever the roots are, what's a positive times positive times positive? X cubed is positive, right? So it's positive going up and negative, negative, negative. It's going down. Now, I need you guys to read these possibilities. I'm going to actually draw on this right now. I'm going to actually draw right here. Rises, so this one, rises on the left and falls to the right. What this means on a graph, it rises left and rises to the right. Is that our graph represented here? No. Next one, it falls to the left but rises to the right. Okay, it falls to the left. See how it's falling on the left side? And rising on the right side that's the end behavior that they're talking about on the next problem this is going to rise on my left and fall on my right the last one is falls on the left and falls on the right these are the only four possibilities for end behavior now which one is it that's something that we have to figure out by using our end behavior model. So in this case, we see it's going to rise, fall to the left, and rise to the right. Okay. Question B is what are the intercepts? What are the intercepts? What are the roots? Okay, what are the x intercepts? What are the roots? For this problem, you would have to um, factor it out. It's probably going to be a 5 here because there's a 5. So let's go ahead and 1, negative 5 negative 1, 5. Let's put a 5 here. 1, 5, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 5. Yes, winner, winner, chicken dinner, x squared minus 1. So our factor was x minus 5, x plus 1, x minus 1. So our zeros, making this go to 0, making this go to 0, is negative 1 and 1. We have three zeros total. We have 5, negative 1, and positive 1. They want us to write it out with a parenthesis or a comma next to each answer. Take a look, it's one, negative one, and five. Exactly what we were saying. 
Now here is the big dilemma here. The question is behavior of the graph for all intercepts. Is there, if there is not an x intercept with a given behavior, state DNE. So what are they talking about? The question is x intercepts where the graph crosses the x axis. Remember how I mentioned about crossing and bouncing. How many times do we see the answer 1, negative 1, and 5? Each of these only happen once. That means they all cross. Do any of these bounce? It only bounces with an even multiplicity. None of them bounce, so you write DNE. And the y intercept, remember, we plug in 0. Let's take a look. If we plug in 0, the answer was going to be 5 anyways. Take a look here. If I plug in 0, the answer was going to be 5 anyways. Okay, so you're going to be answering these questions um, using all the skills we've been working on already. So I'm going to take away some of these questions to make your life a little easier. Let's jump to one that's already set up for us. Let's jump to one that's already factored for us. All right, I want you to take a look at this question here. I see if I multiply the front, what's the end behavior? x, x, and 2x. That's going to be 2x squared, okay? It's going to be 2x squared. Sorry, 2x cubed. 2x cubed, positive, 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 means it's going to be rising on the right. Negative, negative, negative means it's going to be falling on the left. So falls left, rises on the right. Again, okay, let me show you guys how I did that. I said x minus 2 squared 2x plus 3. Just take the front coefficient. Since this is squared, that's x squared times 2x. That's 2x cubed. In a graph, positive, positive, positive goes up on the right. Negative, negative, negative goes down on the left. What are the intercepts? Looking at the problem, what are the zeros? x minus 2 squared and 2x plus 3. The zeros are 2 and negative 3 over 2. Those are my zeros. Because that's already all the work is already done. How many times do these answers repeat? Well, the 2 has a squared. That's a multiplicity of 2. This only happens once. So we cross when it's an even multiplicity and we bounce when it's odd. And the last part, what's the y-intercept? All you have to do is plug in 0, plug in 0 here and plug in 0. That's negative 2 squared times 3. That's 4 times 3 is 12. So you guys will be going through questions like this. I'm going to remove some of these questions. There are too many. I'm going to get rid of some of these. Okay. All right. So that's our lesson. We did kind of rush it toward the end. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you guys can rewatch the video. If you do get stuck, you guys can email me and I can help you out on the problems. Okay. All right. Besides that, have a good day. Thanks.